to the Cherry Picked Podcast, a brand new podcast where fortnightly we'll be releasing episodes with creatives from all realms of the industry, from actors to artists, from cinematographers to circus performers, you name it. Join me fortnightly, your host Dana Dixon, for the Industry Insider Intel. So we've got Reese Wilkinson on today. Hi friends. West End choreographer. Whoa, oh. gosh, can't believe that's even a thing now. I recently workshopped and performed a new musical, Why Am I So Single? Yes. Um, and also, excitingly, you've just been announced for Just One Day, a new musical. Yeah! A new musical, at the Old Vic, the old Vic uh, which is a massive, like, tip, ticket list. Ticket? What am I saying? Bucket list. Bucket list, but it's a tick yeah. off the bucket list, so it's a, that's a not even a thing, list, a yeah. ticket list. Um, but yeah, so like, ticked off, like, doing the Old Vic, because I've always wanted to perform there. I think mm. they produce such cool theatre. And original musical. Original cast. That's insane. Whoa. That's insane. <laughs> that is like, everything you've done has had such, like, a... I mean, like, everything has had such meaning. Yeah. And, like, it's either been an original or, like, a workshop or you've been involved in, like, a f- everything's been a first for you. Which yeah. Which is, like... Totally. So insane. I was, um, as soon as you get a new job, you're obviously like, no, like go put up my spotlight quickly. I'm like, wow, oh, I'm so excited. Um, and I was looking at my spotlight just being like, did I think two years ago that that's what my spotlight would look like? Not it's a chance. It's insane. Like, when I looked at it, I was like, babe, it's been two two years. Not even two years. Not even. It was, it's, I think it's actually two years. It was two years this September. That's amazing. Which is wild. That's yeah. wild. In two years, how much you've done. Like, that's, that's what I wanted to ask. So, like... Hit me. How did you find your track into choreographing? Like, what... Was that a goal from the start? Because I remember you had adventure while you were in Erdang uh-huh. and you were like doing your bits and bobs there yes so um, how, did you know were you set out to like do that was that yeah purpose? I think I think it's it's always been a weird one for me because I've always known that like <clears throat> I wanted to be well originally I wanted to be a dancer like when I was younger like I was gonna be a dancer I just trained in dance and then I my dad was an actor he's an actor my dad's an actor and um he I've always like helped him like learn lines and do self tapes and things like that. So that's always been a part of my life basically. But he, I think that I was like, went to Erdang, I was like, oh, I'm going to be a dancer. And then I like really loved singing and acting. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I've always known that I wanted to choreograph and have like worked at like, I used to work at my old dance school. Um, and I used to choreograph dances for them and teach from quite a young age. So I think I've always wanted to do it, but <clears throat> I'd say that I like, I'm really in the headspace at the minute and, and now that I want to do both and I want to do both successfully. Yeah, um, but and it's I think doable. Like, it's I totally think you've doable. really showed that. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and the reason, one of the reasons I actually do want to show it is to, to, to want to do it myself for my own personal like goals and dreams and aspirations. But I also want to show other people that it is possible to do both and yeah. to be able to work within both industries like... Mm-hmm like successfully do you know what I mean and that there yes there is sometimes you know conflict of interest of like things like that but if you remain and and have like you remain professional and be kind like there's that's you you can kind of yeah exactly yeah in whatever facet um so it is interesting because people I think as soon as you kind of I think as soon as obviously like the Stephen Schwartz thing happened like it was like lovely little gig to do like first time having my choreography on a West End stage yeah um but you know it was couple of numbers very chilled and actually then you know the the amount of people that I had come and be like oh like so is that are you like ready to move into choreography and I was like oh no like I'm gonna do both yeah, <laughs> I was like I, I feel like there's such a like, bit but I, I am gonna do both <laughs> yeah like you get to like 28 and then you're like okay we're either agenting or we're choreographing yeah. but this is the thing like so I was like how how did you find that navigating this thing of like hierarchy because how how did you find that like did you experience any like difficulty in that or did you sort of just um 
create no, your own path and like yeah I, I was gonna say I've not really associated I've not associated for anybody right. um so I haven't like I haven't like I've learned from the great like a, like a few of the greats like Ellen and uh Jerry Mitchell and uh and I've never like associated them, like worked with them as like their associate or their assistant, mm -hmm. but I've worked for them as an actor and as a dancer. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, there is, there definitely is a high like a hierarchy of like of experience, I would yeah. say. Like people are more yeah. experienced than I am. But I like I know that I'm not coming in to do I'm just coming in to do me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And like whatever that is, as an act as an actor or as a creative. Yeah. Like the most important thing is that I'm staying true to myself and I'm producing work that I love and I feel feel special to me and feel special to the people that I'm working with. And Do you, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I enjoy it. That's like, I was speaking to someone yesterday, a fellow performer, and we were just saying how you can get so caught up in the gratification or like the success or the goal and not necessarily, like you forget the passion behind it. Like you started it with no intention of achieving anything, with no, no. like, you just went to dance because you loved dance. Yeah. Before and it became a career. Yes, yeah, so totally. Like, and I think that like, you know, people are always saying like, oh, like, you must know what you're doing. And I'm very, I like, I do, <laughs> I do. I understand how networking works. And yeah. I've always been very good at networking. And, but actually like, networking is <laughs> there isn't like a thing to it it's just being kind and being chatty yeah. and, and like it's like expanding your like spider's web of like who the who you want to work with oh, yeah. and it's not like it doesn't need to be anything other than that do you know what yeah. I mean like people are like oh you're so good at networking I'm like oh I just like chat to people just it's not friendly yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. if I see be people like you know and if there's like I know that um shows are having press nights i'll try and go to the press night because i know that like there's going to be lots of people there who are yes. going to be making decisions and creatives and things like that and then you get to meet those people and have a chat and let them meet you as a human first mm -hmm. that that is more enticing hopefully to work with you do you know what i mean mm -hmm. like that would be like and that's my biggest piece of networking advice just like go to all the fun you don't even have to go to like the parties afterwards you just go to like the theater and and sit in the audience yeah. and then and in like in the bar if you see someone that you know just, and you love their work go up and tell them yeah like, I think like I'm just so unashamed to like tell people if I think they're fabulous or I really respect them yeah because I, I don't have anything to lose and if they like if for some reason and not that anybody's ever done this to me but if for some reason anybody was like oh god that was a bit intense or like why would they tell me that like why I don't even know them that's on them like yeah. I'm just expressing my feelings do you know what I mean you. yeah no, totally 100%. not. But always like, it's also like, a, there's, there is an element of respect, you know, it's not approaching yeah. them in like a, you know, it's about knowing what they do have have done and what yeah. they've done and, and appreciating respect, it. Do you know what I mean? There's no ego. Yeah, like, yeah, totally. Involved. Oh God, yeah. yeah. I mean, the thing is, is what's funny is that I, I don't, I mean, we all have a little bit of ego, right? But right. I don't think that. I think my ego is like so silly because it's just like when I'm in like core like in when I'm choreographing or anything like that, like I feel like it's when people compliment me or like I always get like my shoulders like go up by my ears. I'm like, oh thank you. <laughs> because I'm just like it it's like, oh it's it's nice, but Every it's like it gets me like Cool. I'm always quite like I'm very grateful when people compliment yeah. me because I know that I I love to compliment people when I think they're fabulous. So when yeah. someone does it to me, I feel I feel very like I also know sometimes how much I have to pluck the courage to be like I want to tell that person they're fabulous, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's anybody like agents that I respect or producers or um, fellow choreographers, directors, dancers, mm -hmm. like anybody. If I see them in something, I'll always make sure I message. Yeah. And even if it just stays in their request box, like. I, I've done my part done in telling part. them that they need... Because they also may suffer with low self-confidence, like the rest yeah. of us. Do you know what I mean? There's a like, lot of people with imposter syndrome. In yeah, the totally. It's, it's, everyone feels the same. Everyone started out the same. You yeah, know? Like, agreed. We all had a journey. We all started somewhere. No one's perfect straight away. No. Growth is a thing and it's beautiful and that's part of the journey. And I, I always reiterate to enjoy the process. Like, if you're getting there quick, sometimes, like... 
you know, you never know what you might feel at the top or like yeah. you've got your dream role, then what? You know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> we're in this totally. rush and race against age in our industry. Uh -huh. Also like your, your lifespan as a dancer and your yeah. physical fitness. And like, sometimes it can be daunting that you've not booked and you're turning 25 and it's like, oh, you know, like yeah. maybe I'm not like going <clears> to <throat> be seen for stuff as much as like, you know, there's another year that's just graduated against me now. Yeah. Um, And it can be daunting. And I think it can, I, it can be so daunting. Yeah. And I think that like the only piece of like advice that I'm not even qualified to give <laughs> is that you have to being an actor or choosing to do what we do is a lifestyle of uncertainty and it, of uncertainty yeah. and 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 it but it is a lifestyle it's not mm -hmm. a job do you mm -hmm. know what i mean like if you yeah. are choosing to be an actor or you're choosing to be a creative you have committed to that lifestyle yeah. and no one can tell you you're not what that thing mm -hmm. because you have chosen to be that thing do you know yeah. what i mean like if you haven't worked as an actor you're still an actor yeah because you're doing the thing you're grafting you're working a yeah. Like in a restaurant by the whilst going to auditions, like you always want to like <coughs> see the product or see the evidence. No, of I that. don't need to see it. I just need to know that you're committed to the lifestyle because yeah. that is what we that's what we love. Do you know what I mean? It's why Definitely. we why we do that's what we do. That's why we do it. And like that goes back to the like going back to your passion, going back to your roots, why you started, why yeah. like it, it can you can get lost in the moment and in your Oh my situation. god, so much. And, and, you know, comparison is the thief of joy. Love that quote. That's great. I've never heard that. Yeah. But I love that. It is like if, if you're, yeah, if you're just constantly comparing yourself, you're never going to be fulfilled. And like, yeah, it doesn't help with the yeah. world that we currently live in, but we're like social media is a massive thing and, and it's sometimes a really good business tool and sometimes a really awful, awful pit of rubbishness. Mm. <laughs> it, but, it's a double edged sword. 100%. Yeah, it definitely yeah. is. But it can be good um, in some forms, you know, self-promotion. Like, totally. it's a lot more accessible now we have got it. Like, yep. for us to just approach people, connect on a different yeah. level. Like, it, it's brought some good in my journey, definitely. No, t me too. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's like coming back to your roots, remembering why you started and also, like, not getting caught up in your situation and remembering, like... I do this because I love it, not because I expect anything from it. No, I agree. And actually, like, I think you can always, like, as an actor and, and, and a creative, I think there is two sides to our brains that one, pardon me, one side is that we do have to really think about the journey we want to go on quite a lot. Like, mm -hmm. I make decisions when, now that I'm in, for some reason in the position where I do have to make decisions between contracts, which literally makes me want to like pull my eyeballs out a little bit because I'm just like what is going on um but like you do have to sit and that's why like my agent is fantastic um and we sit together and we really have a chat about where I want to go and 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 how those decisions affect us but also at the point at the base of it all you know he always says and we always say like what is going to bring me the most joy. Sometimes you have to make decisions that are right for your career and right for the thing that you know you maybe want to achieve in the future. And sometimes you just have to go, do you know what? This pays no money, but it's going to bring me the joy of joys. Exactly. And that's what I need right now. Do you yeah, know what I mean? So 100%. It's yeah. balancing that with also trying to make a living and live in London and survive, <sighs> which is a whole nother, a whole other whole thing. struggle. But yeah. also I just wanted to speak on how it came about your musical connections and like that sort of that process yeah where did it start um well I f yeah so basically I wrote this like idea for a show that it, it it like is based on the idea that we do like a chat show meets a concert um right. and I then wrote like I wrote, I basically wrote a list of all the songs that I have like major connections with um, and whether like, whether they're connected to like a location or a person or uh, a time in my life or like something I was going through. Um, and then I was like, oh, like this could be like a, a fun idea for a show mm -hmm. that people come and I get lots of guests on and we sit and we have a chat on a sofa literally like this and then we sing some songs um and then I was like wait who wants to know about that and that like who wants to know about the fact that I have a connection with this song in my life no one but 
also I don't care. Like, I just want to do it because it's fun yeah. and it yeah. like will bring people joy. Like mm-hmm. that, that was the main reason I did it. And it was, it was a really exciting moment because it was kind of like solo concert meets show meets sh- like it was it was a lot of things and that's why I was kind of like not sure what to call it but connections just felt like the right word because yeah. I not only was I talking about my connections with music and how music has influenced my whole world since I was growing up like from my like grandma and my grandpa like or nanny and papa actually uh mm-hmm. my nanny and papa being like my nanny was a huge fan of like uh, you know, the like singing in the rain and things like that. And that's where like my love of music theater came from. Um, and then like my, you know, my cousin's side, like they're all like huge, like rock fans. I remember they bought me like the Foo Fighters album. Um, and then like, you know, I just, it's been surrounded me for my whole life. Yeah, music. And I think that I, I can, I am able to literally if you were to ask me to pick a like year of my life and I went and looked at the songs, I would be able to like hear a song and it would be able to transport me to a time in my life. And that was basically the whole point of the show was that music is so powerful Mm -hmm. and like without music, there's no dance. No, without music, there's no dance. And without actually like without music, I wouldn't have a lot of memories that I have. I don't think Mm -hmm. like I'm able to literally put on a playlist on Spotify of like, 2011 songs and it will take me yeah. back to a certain amount like a certain time mm-hmm. sometime not good sometime yeah. good um and it was that was kind of what fueled it and mm-hmm. we we had an amazing time i had the ridiculous guest list uh like oliver thompson grace moa billy nevers Genevieve, Nicole, like it was stupid. And I was like, when I asked someone to do it, I was like, you don't actually have to. <laughs> I was like, you can do it if you want to, but you don't have to. Yeah. Um, and they were like, no, 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 we'll do it. And then it was ridiculous. Like it was the best, one of the best nights of my life. Yeah. Um, and uh, you might need to watch the space because we might be doing another one. Ooh. The privilege I have that someone wants to produce that for me. Like that is a major privilege that I am aware of in my life. And and I'm so grateful for it and so thankful for that people take the risk on me mm-hmm. to be able to produce their stuff. Because I couldn't do it on my own. I can't, yeah. you know, I couldn't afford that. But the fact that someone is taking a risk on me enough to do that means a lot. So shout yeah. out to my new producer. Um, Amazing. Thank you very much. <laughs> So we're going to come on to the <coughs> section curtain up. I'm excited. Um, yeah, we supply guests with some questions about their sector in the industry um, and test their knowledge. And if you don't know, just say curtain up. Curtain up. And I'll give you the answer. Hit me. Right? Okay, I'm ready. So, having been in Anne Julia. Oh gosh, it's, <laughs> it's a Shakespeare question. I'm going yes. to suck at it so bad. <laughs> having been in Anne Julia, can you tell me this quote from Shakespeare's Peace. Oh God. Um, what the following phrase refers to. Okay. Yeah. Oh, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. What do you think that could be? Oh, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. Am I saying like what I think the phrase means? Yeah, what do you think? Like, I'm giving like the translation yeah. is. What, she, what's it talking about? What what say me one more time? Oh, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. It's said it about, by Romeo. Oh, is I think it means like um is it your eyes? Like, have your eyes lit up? Like, your eyes light up? Or, like, be in love with someone? Slightly. Sort of? Oh, pan up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, she, he's basically just saying she's beautiful. Oh, fine. It's a compliment. Oh, okay. I, Do you know what? If I was chatted up like that, I'd be... <clears throat> I think if someone said to me that line, I'd be like, yeah. I'd swept off my Take plate. me on a date. <laughs> Next one, oh with God. the new musical Just For One Day centering around Live Aid. Yes. Oh. In eight, 1985, <coughs> which band's musical set did a red warning light flash to let them know their time was up? In the actual concert. <coughs> Have a think. It was Queen. No? No. I actually do know this because because Bob Geldof talked about it. Um, I actually met Bob Geldof and uh, we were, basically we were doing one of the workshops in like um, a theatre in like a school. And it meant that all the sinks were really low. 
so that I like we were, I like was like washing my hands like this, <laughs> and then like Bob Geldof just like things. came and stood and stood next to me. And he went, "Oh, you've got a cracking voice," and I was like, "Wow." Oh, Thank you. <laughs> but we were both just like well, washing our... Tall, like, like, obviously, Bob Geldof was really tall as well. So he was like... Hell. It was really funny. That's crazy. Um, the who? Yeah. Oh, yeah, fine. Yeah. Yeah, Basically, that makes sense. what happened was then Pete Townsend stepped on the warning light, broke it, and they played for an extra five mins. I mean... iconic. That is sex jokes and rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> this one's just like a simple one. It's like, right, can you name me like five choreographic devices... That can be used when devising. Okay, so a motif, as in yeah. something you repeat. Yeah. Um, a canon. Yeah. Uh, cyclical structure. Yeah. You start at the beginning and end, the, end of the same place. Um, uh, gosh, t- two more. Um, choreographic structures, choreographic things, choreographic devices. Um, mirroring. Oh, GCSE now. <laughs> yeah, I'm giving it. I'm giving it GCSE dance. Mirroring, like yeah. or or like reflective movement yeah um and uh partner work yes so other ones that you have i'm really interested so i've got abstraction <laughs> i don't know what that is i don't know either right you've got kind of multi like contrast <laughs> contrast contrast yeah do you know contrast. what contrast interesting question but contrast what i'm discovering right now as i'm like going on my journey of being a choreographer i love contrast Mm. Like when something goes and uh, anybody that I teach currently in the current world will know that I literally talk about contrast all the time. Uh, I love like soft to sharp really quickly or like yeah. high to low really quickly or like That's dynamic. big. Yeah. The dynamic yeah. shift between the two of them is, is lovely. Yeah. <coughs> uh, accumulation, repetition, reversal, retrograde, inversion. Inversion. Is that just, what, what's inversion? Uh, I have no clue. Let's Google it. I need to, you know... Well, I need to... Well, clearly, I am not a choreographer because I do not know what these things are. Uh, inversion. Fragmentation. Fragment, fragmentation is when you, like, take take a phrase and you, like, do it... I think it's when you take it and you, like, break it down and you do it... So you see the little full bits. phrase and then you see, yeah, like, the thing... Yeah, It, like, fragmented. And embellishment. Just general. Yeah. Just general source. Source. <laughs> I mean, I maybe used half a curtain. Half a curtain. I use it for a the curtain call, like a, I use, another curtain. You know, like when in Shrek where they lift and you see the tap dancing. <laughs> I lift. I use that for the live air question. Yeah. <laughs> section which is through the opera glasses oh my gosh yes i am so excited i've bought something exciting i want to see it right so basically we ask a guest to bring an ice for an object Ooh. or like memorabilia that has meaning to them or like a story behind it from behind the scenes i think you're gonna laugh are I'm you ready you want to close your I'm eyes yeah, i'm just not gonna look what is it okay can look now I'm gagged. You brought your violin on yeah. the bike. Yeah. <laughs> Me like this on the bike. Like. What string? So <clears throat> the story behind this is, is that, <clears throat> sorry, at Julia, um, in the in the prologue or the pre-show, I would come on with a violin every night. Um, so like I would stand on the back of the sign and I used to have to like put the sign up and you had to do some like technical bits and bobs. And then I would come down and someone would hand me a violin and I would play the violin. So basically, the majority of the videos I have from Juliet are me fake playing a violin on stage. Um, That's how I and it. they Without a bow, just... with oh no, with a bow. And sometimes I would like play it as a guitar. Sometimes I would play it nice. as a drum. Um, <laughs> creative. Uh, and I always used to. I always used to want the one with the strings because you'd literally be at the front of the stage and then sometimes the strings would pop off and you'd be like, oh, I don't have any strings. And then it just gave me something interesting to talk to the audience about. Uh, but the fun fact is, is that that majority of the photos I have from Juliet are with me fake playing a violin. Um, wow. And they were going to throw it out because they were like, well, we, we're going to get so new ones. This is genuine... This is from... Oh. I know, this is from the stage. So this is one of three that we used to play. One had, like, full strings on it. One was, like, half strings. Um, and then there was one for the... the uh, the band to go on stage with afterwards so they didn't have right. to take their own violin. Um... But yeah, so this was, this is actually from the stage and they were throwing it out and I was like, I know it sounds weird, but can I have that? Can and they were like, yeah, of course though. you can. Well, I think what I'm actually going to do is Auction I'm going to get it, it um, 
engraved to like either on the front or on the back with like the date I started and the date oh, I finished. That's uh, but I have like a wall at the minute of like stuff that I've picked up and uh, like from shows and and from like my life and it's like all in black frames but like lots of different like black frames um so this is I think what I'd like to eventually get when I have like my like mansion in LA um I think I'd eventually like that on my big like white wall in the living yeah. room and have it like all and like yeah. have a frame around this but it just be like protruding outwards yeah, do you know what I mean protruding. so yeah it wasn't really it isn't really like a cool story That's but I just think it's like quite a, a cool piece of item for us memorabilia on, on it is I think it's one of those things that I was at when I saw this go, like when it was about to go in the bed, I was like, nah, that's not nah, going nah, anywhere. Nah, I was like, you're coming, you're coming home with me. With me. <laughs> you've been straining my basket. Um, so yeah, I, but I've got, I've got a few other things and, and like, like fun things that I have like at home um, that like are really good memories for me. So, but that was my, my favorite one. Cause it just, there was so many videos of me just like playing the violin, like playing it backwards. And yeah. it was kind of the thing that became my thing, like when I was in, in Juliet. So, and everyone like recognized that that was my thing when I came out in the pre-show. Um, and obviously we had like lots of lovely people that came and watched the show quite a lot. Um, yeah. So they, some of the stuff that they gave me was really, really special. I've got the constellation maps of when I went on for Romeo and Francois the first time, like what the stars looked like. Wow. Um, I've got like this whole scrapbook um, that was like, it's the most incredible thing. And they, I feel like, like the fans of... were so engaged and I feel like that's because you had that interaction at the start, like that full totally. wall was broke, which I think was such a good, like, how did you find that? Because I, I mean, saw some videos of you, like, popping off before the show. Yeah, like, so that is, that, so, because I was on stage swing as well, so I got to do yeah. some of the other tracks at some points, um, and then a few times I would have to do the solo that started the show. Um, and I'm, I'm like... Uh, that is sometimes where I lack a bit of confidence. Like, I don't think I'm the best dancer. So I think babe, that... It was... It, it was it it was a real moment for me and I'm so glad that someone filmed it because obviously you're allowed, like you're allowed to film in the pre-show um and I was just so glad that someone captured that memory for me because it is something yeah. it is one of those videos it was my West End debut it is something I will I will tre cherish forever do you know what I mean we so, love that yeah <laughs> okay. Which, uh, I'm going to show you some pictures. So usually oh I'd like get a picture from like, if, if if you were doing more film and TV work, I'd get something from a scene you were in or something. It's, Fine. And, and it's like spot the difference. Okay, it's okay. Fun. I can use spot the difference. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I've now just got three pictures of you from different points. Okay. Um, and we're going to see <clears> if you can on point out the difference. I love that. And so this is the first one. I'll pop it on screen, guys. Oh my god! So this is my first. Yeah. Um, no zooming allowed as well. No zooming. Okay, so this is my first pro uh, professional shot for Julia. Yeah. What is missing? Or yeah, I didn't wear. I didn't have a watch on. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't have a watch on because I had they. I had these bracelets that I used to wear. Bracelets. Yeah. Whoa! I'm so Whoa, glad look I recognise that. that. Yes, Ooh. fierce, fierce. And um, but Francois did wear a watch. Right. So that's why I got confused. I was like, oh. <coughs> but yeah. Cool to know. Okay, that's the first one. Oh, I'm so glad I got that. That would have been so embarrassing. Now we've got... I remember when that photo first came through, I literally lost my... It's such <laughs> I was a like... photo. It's a fab photo. Right, now this one may be a bit harder. So this is Connections, the, the press image for this. Uh, yes, it's whatever this fella is doing in the bottom hand side. <laughs> Who is that? It's just zoom in. <laughs> <laughs> it's Andrew Lloyd Webber. Not Andrew, not ALW chilling. <laughs> well, I can tell you that there were no Andrew Lloyd Webber uh, records it was down Madonna, there, I don't think. I think that was on there. Oh, like, fierce. How iconic. Let's put Andrew on uh, there. Let's put Andrew on there. Put yeah, Andy. I don't think I have any. I don't think I have any ALW what records. An Right. Now we've got a London Fashion Week. Whoa! Okay. So this, I went to this event with uh, my lovely, lovely friend Carl Mann and he invited me and it was my first Fashion Week event. 
and I'm not allowed to zoom. Okay, so something's missing, did you say? Oh my God, it says my name in the bubble. <laughs> Reese Wilkinson, Justin Reese Caston Wilkinson. X. Reese Wilkinson. Uh, the clothes were gorgeous and it was a really cool moment. Yeah. So yeah, it was, um, it was a gorgeous, gorgeous event. It was felt quite like surreal because I've always wanted to go to a fashion week event, but yeah. it was nice to like go and like see what it was all about. You're having all your firsts this having year. Having lots, like, lots of firsts. Yeah, and I'm, I feel very... It's not a day goes by when I don't feel grateful for all of them, to be fair. This was very obvious. No, those, some of those, but that was very obvious. But I, the first one did take me a while. Mm. So I actually can't get that one wrong. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> Literally a photo of me. Um, but yeah, no, a bit of fun. But um, okay, we've got, I just want to speak a bit about your pieces. So... I slash playback okay um usually i'd play like sort of a moment tv work stuff like that uh -huh. i love your concerts Ooh, gosh so, it's been a while so i want to i want you to just sort of brief us on how it was to make it uh-huh god process. we could be here a while yeah so the first piece like i'm obsessed with is pippin like uh, what a brilliant piece what um, a moment as well and I wanted to talk about how you sort of went through this section. Love, 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 love this section. Honey Joseph. Blushed and and razzle dazzled. Dry your lips. How was the editing and how was the... So, yeah, I've worked with a fantastic, I worked with a fantastic videographer for basically all of... Um, my videos uh, because he's just amazing to work with and he understands how I work as a creative. His name is Chris Brooker. Um, uh, he is at Brooker Films um, and he's fantastic for all your videography needs. Um, he video, he um, films and edits for me. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that particular section, we were like basically trying to introduce, the whole idea was to have like these eight uh, female characters who could be the leading player all in their own right. Yeah. Um, so they were all their own versions of like this leading player. Um, and the idea was to like introduce each of them as to what they kind of were and how their movement style worked. Um, I'm and obsessed with when you can't see anyone behind and then you see all the hands. Or yeah, like, you see, I'm uh, that is one of my like favorite that. shots I've ever, and it's always in my show reels. Mm. Every time I've got my show reels. It's, it's so visually impressive. It's like. Yeah, and, and, and you've got beautiful Lily Cushway's face um, at the front of it. That is one of my favorite shots of all time. <gasps> oh, it's just sensational. And I can say that, that and I back beautiful. myself in saying that because yeah. Chris did could think that is Lily Cushway. That's um, fabulous. Oh my gorgeous, gorgeous friend. Yeah, the, the the main inspiration was that I love the music and that the, like I said, I wanted to have this idea that we had like eight strong, powerful women playing this like leading player character who I, I like really admire. Um, and to have them all be introduced and it, it was kind of, you know, filming it in the Great Hall at Erdang was just like the idea of like this like very grand, like this place of like grandeur um, and only kind of aided that kind of thing that kind of feeling of the characters. Um, but yeah, it was um, it was one of my favorites to shoot. Um, it was one of the easiest to shoot because it was in one location. Yes. Um, and I was very grateful for all nine of those girls who are now doing fantastic, wonderful things, all of them. Um, but yeah, those specific shots really like, I wanted to create a sense of movement Mm -hmm. I wanted to create a sense of like introduction. I think yeah. that was the main idea. Was like and it did. It was like bam. Like you see lots of faces and like this is who I am and this is what it's I'm like bringing. Pictures. In. Yeah. That's I saw the picture. I wanted to see like, like, bam. Like yeah. energy. Like energy. whatever energy they chose for their like leading player character. I wanted to see that. If that makes yeah. sense. And then to be able to do that, and then for my first like West End choreographic gig to be for Stephen Schwartz, and I choreographed Crazy. the opening, which was from Pippin, which was magic to do. So it was like, it was a big circle. So that was like your moment. starting point, and did you sort of nip a little bit? I think that I like inspired. I think I did, and I think that like uh, no, what what's amazing about being a choreographer and 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 
being on my journey now for for a few years is that I can look back at Pippin and know it was amazing, but also know where I I lost the mark, I missed the mark on some things. Like I know where I missed the mark on like style. And I know that like in the chorus, I know that I went quite like tech jazzy, but not, it didn't feel like, it was amazing. Like I loved the choreography, but I know that it didn't feel very right necessarily in the stylistically where everything else sat in the piece. Mm-hmm. So I know that that jigsaw puzzle piece next time, I would just need to alter a little bit and da da da. But like, we should always be able to do that with our work. We should always be able to not be, not be the biggest critics of it, but just be able to like, reflect. look back and reflect upon it. Um, so I think when I was creating for the concert, creating for concerts is a completely different beast because your, your main objective is to only add to the singer and the music that's being played as opposed to necessarily talking about a narrative Mm -hmm. um but my main inspiration for the opening was like magic to do is like all about magic so i watched loads of like close hand magic and lots of like how that all worked and then like all the presentation like side of it all and like loads of those like old magic posters you know where they're like where they're like this and the hats like coming off and the birds are coming out of it so that's what we did and that's where I kind of pulled from from that amazing and were you movement directing on that so um, I've done I did choreography for Stephen Schwartz that was like three numbers across the concert um we did like opening number a like silly fun number and then we did a duet for Beautiful City from Godspell um and then I've been movement director on a production called No Limits, um, which was a song cycle that we did at the Turbine Theatre um, with a beautiful cast. And I did that with Dean Johnson, the director, um, and fabulous MD Ella Ingram as well. Um, and we, uh, that was a really interesting thing for me because I've never really thought about movement direction. Mm-hmm. Um, it was always like, I love big choreography dance scenes. Yeah. <laughs> I want to dance. Yeah. Um, but actually like, it's something I'm really considering now of like being in another side to my to string to your bow. String to my bow, yeah. And string to the violin. String to my violin. <laughs> um uh, and uh it's a really interesting one because it's actually like thinking more about that was about like working out how people move in the comfort of their own home because it yeah. was all set in the comfort of their own home. Mm-hmm. And my main inspiration was what how would people move if there was a fly on the wall does that make sense we all do silly funny things in our homes that no one else sees but how do we encapsulate that form of movement where you are at your comfort like your most comfortable on stage that Mm. was kind of the idea um so yeah Mm. yeah i do i am enjoying movement direction and i do i'm just about to be announced uh we will know by now yeah that i'm gonna be uh doing this this is big pinch me moment uh I'm going to be a movement director for Bat Boy at the London Palladium Amazing. for one night uh, in on the 31st of October. Wow, so, what's, what's it about? Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wild story. Um, it's a musical that I didn't know, but it is essentially about a boy who uh, is like half boy, half bat. Um, and then he resurfaces in this village um, and they're all terrified of him. And then they realise that is he truly the villain that they need to be scared of and all that kind of stuff. So it's like right. small village kind of uh, That's finds a bat. so amazing though. Palladium, uh, big movies. The Palladium, the actual Palladium, That's the real crazy. life Palladium. <laughs> um, so Obsessed as well with punk rocker. Oh, this is, uh, and I, I mean this in the nicest way because I love all of my concerts, but this is one that is one of my favourites of all time. Yeah. So what I wanted to ask was, did you use drone shots or was this sort of just panning with a... So this was all done on uh, pan on, on gimbal. Yeah. Um, we, there was no freehand in this apart from the section that was like really down low. Yeah, I love, here, this I love, shot of here. love the moving through the grass. Yeah. Was that like an intention? Uh, totally. Just... So the, the location made that, yeah. made that. Uh, and I find that sometimes like, like it completely it made that film like it, doesn't it? I um I I was sold on the location when I had the idea I listened to the song uh you know it's an iconic song yeah. and I was like I've never thought about dancing to this kind of music like yeah. it is doesn't always scream as soon as you, when you listen to it it doesn't always scream like dance you know some songs like i scream like oh this is a song to dance to yeah. it wasn't a song that necessarily screamed that to me i was back in my house um when like the summer of like the kind of covid where uh 
we were just about to go back to like schools and things were starting to happen again. Um, and I was back in my house in, uh, London, uh, and I was cleaning the flat just because that's what I was doing to like distract myself from the world. Um, and I, the song came on on my playlist and I was like, God, that really, those words really resonate with like what's happening right now and how much people need a voice right now. Mm. Um, and like specifically the punk rockers and uh, the like, that like 70s, uh, 60s, 80s, like across 60s, 70s and 80s, those people that really fought for like the things that needed to be fought for. Mm. Um, I feel like we need that now and we are having that now. And yeah. and it was, 100%. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a message and, an, and a, a thing that, is never boring or um it's never you can always relate to that video yeah, and i know that that video timeless. will stand as time and I, yeah. I i do think that um and so yeah i i like listened to the video and i was like what is this what 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 is listen to the song i was like what is this and i was like we're all like like it needs to be punky but then it needs to be like flower powery so i was like right so i want them in like those white dresses that have got mm -hmm. like this like really fruit like floaty kind of vibe but then I want them in big heavy Doc Martin boots to give that kind of like yeah, punk rockery feel so then we did we had that kind of like co like contrast in the like costuming yeah and my mum like me, me and my mum sat and costumed it together because my mum used to do the costume design I for my dad and so we sat and did that together and then I was like I want them to wear like really pretty gold jewelry mm -hmm. and then like flowers in their hair but I wanted the jewelry to all be like quite study and like sharp so mm -hmm. there was like real detail going on a and then I was like a bit on. of costume designing I was like now where does it need to be and I was like oh wait it needs to be like in nature like yeah. it needs to be in a field and then I was like it needs to be in cornfields mm -hmm. I was like it has to be in these How big like that? so near London right so Here's the actual tea. We started rehearsals and we didn't have a location. Okay. We didn't have a location. Uh, and I, on the second day of rehearsal, went to the location, mm -hmm. uh, which is a place called Castle Farm in Kent. Uh, the woman who owns it was really, really helpful. And basically what had happened was there was meant to be a Marvel movie filming there. Uh, and they'd can't cancelled because of COVID and stuff. Um, so I basically sent my risk assessment off for being able to film in COVID and what all the things we were going to adhere to and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then she was like, yeah, great. Well, I'll give it you for a discounted rate because it's happening tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we'll see tomorrow. We had like 16 acres of land to choose from. And they just went, choose whatever you want. Like, we'll sort it out. And they were like, and you can trample all over the things because we're going to, we're going to, I don't know any farming terminology, um, but we're going to do the thing where we get rid of it yeah. later. So it was honestly like breathtaking. Oh. Like we it went. It looks amazing. It was like, visually it, that that sells it. The yeah, totally, totally. Sell. The location sells it. And we were so lucky. The girls were like, we turned up on the day and the girls were like, Reese, this is wild. And I was like, yeah, I know. This is a bit stupid. I was like, what is going on? I love moments like that. But it was, it wasn't, it was one of those moments where I literally went, I've wanted to do this for my whole life. I'm making a film. Like, I'm making like, a film. Like, I'm making... I'm doing the thing. Yes. Um, so, yeah. It was... It, the location made everything about that that film. And it had to be in this, like... It had to be in nature. And then when we filmed that shot, it was, like, middle of the day, boiling hot. Uh, and then we did loads of, like, photo shoot for it. We did loads of promotion for it. Yeah. And then the shot that is also one of my favourites is the one at the end with all the... Uh, yeah, what ribbons. they called ribbons, yeah. um, and that was. I basically said to Chris, I was like, I just want you to take in the land, and I want them to feel really small. Mm -hmm. But then we go in and we see the power that it has because the whole point of the film was that I wanted to like give this idea of people having a voice and having something to say about things that are wrong, mm -hmm. and how that sometimes the prop we can look really small. Yeah. Like we can look like we don't have any effect yeah. on, on the world because yeah. we only are one voice. We are only six voices. Yeah. So then I wanted to like have this really wide shot of showing how small we could be mm -hmm. and then come into this really tight shot on all of them of like how powerful they were dancing yeah. to really push across the message that 
no matter how small you think you are or your voice doesn't matter, your energy and your power yeah. does. And that was kind of the whole point of that that last yeah. shot. The amazing thing is that Chris used to like, Chris used to do break dance. So oh, he so knows good. and understands how dancers an an like body moves and musicalities. And then I want this, and then I want this, and then I want this to pop out of this, and then I want this to go. <laughs> and he just goes, funny. okay. That's and like, we'll honestly, though that day we were like walking back, we were going like from hills to hills. We weren't having, you know, I couldn't afford us all to be like carted around in the Land Rover. Do you know what I mean? We're not, we're talking budget. I can I'd like saved packs. my money that I, I worked for three years at Erdang. Every weekend I taught, every weekend. And like, when I say every weekend, I taught from like Saturdays for like four hours and then Sundays for like six hours. Wow. And I spent all of that money on Punk Rocker and Pippin. Wow. Like, I like, you know, like, look, it was a lot of money. And I just went, I went, that's the investment. Because yeah. it has, it has really, you have to invest in your future mm. and you have to invest in the manifestation of what you want to achieve and what, and what you want to be your reality. Yeah. Like money is, is, is a rubbish thing. But if you work hard in any form of like job and save and, and do your best, like, and then it feels like, oh, I don't want to spend it on this. Like, I want to spend it on, you know, something more practical. It's like, well, this is part of it. You have to yeah. put the investment into it. You have to to um, see results. Yeah. Um, and I do think I am starting to see those results, but I won't 100%. stop putting investment in. What it was, I thought I put it on this morning. I'm, I bought T-shirts for Meraki 20 when I started that kind of like thing of them being like the name of the films. And I bought T-shirts and I spent a stupid amount on them. But I was like, no, this is part of, and then all the, the girls brand. like wear them brand. out, and yeah. so you know, punk rocker holds a very special place in my heart. It's yeah, um, it's, it's one of piece. it's one of my favorites. This tattooed on my arm that says "But what if you fly," um, and it is the my mum writes this poem in all my cards, and it's uh, oh. "Come to the edge, my dear, but what if you fall? But what if you fly?" She came, he pushed, he flew, and it's about the fact that like you. You can feel fear for things, but until you like, you can always ask the what if it goes wrong, mm -hmm. but we very rarely in our lives ask ourselves, but what, what if, if you fly? Right? Like, yeah. what if it goes right? Yeah. So I honestly, I must look at that several times a day before I like send email to some really big producer that I just really want to work with or send an email to this fashion brand that I want to do a collaboration with or like whatever. I always look at this and I'm always like, I know that, you know, what if it goes yeah. right? And we've also got a piece, which is... God, that is a throwback. That is actually way. the second video of Meraki 20. Oh my God. Please. Love this piece. Never felt such gratitude than when I see them killing the game now to... Uh, been a part to, to be a part like... of that and uh, to have had them work with me. Um, but interestingly enough, that is the only film I've ever shot myself. Wow, you shot it yourself? I did. Wow. I, I bought the equipment and I shot it on a camera and I shot that one myself. And what I said, it? never again. <laughs> it's I said, so much responsibility. I said, I said, I'm not doing it. I said, because actually what happened was, um, and, and the choreography in that is some of my favorite choreography I've ever done. Yeah. Um, I don't know if my filming shows it off to the best of its ability. Right. Um, and I'm happy to be bad at something. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm not good at filming things. I know what I want when someone else films it, yeah. but I'm not good at filming it Sometimes myself. Sometimes two minds <laughs> are better than one. And at that point in my life, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't afford to have yeah. anybody film it. Videographer. I yeah. like had the equipment because... I'd got given it for, like, mum and dad bought me it for Christmas. Like, that was my Christmas present for that year. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I, so then I was just like, oh, well, I'll just film it. And actually, like, looking back, like, I don't regret that because I learned the lesson that you have to have people around you that can make your visions look good. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. like. Just a different perspective. Yeah, totally different, different perspective. Eye. And yeah. also, look, like, one brain is not the best. Yeah like many brains on many things. You don't need all the chiefs. You need to have someone that's steering the ship and doing the vision. And I'm quite, I'm happy to do that. Yeah. But you do need multiple people because like, yeah. even like- Every role is vital. In totally. Crew, like, and we just, I, the, I filmed the biggest film that I filmed last year. Yeah. 
um, which is hopefully going to come out by the end of this year. Um, I haven't got an exact date yet, but we're in like the fourth draft at the minute. Um, And it's super exciting. It's the first like musical film that I've produced. So it's singing, acting and dancing. Uh, I wrote the script. Uh, I adapted it from a song that already existed all of that kind of stuff so that is hopefully coming out this year and actually what i realized when i did that film is that i was lucky enough to have two producers come on and 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 pay for it um but the crew were a really vital part of it as well as the dancers and the actors but i everyone helped Mm. and i didn't have to take on the whole world and i like because I sometimes, the reason I actually do it sometimes because I don't want anybody else to, I like, I don't want anybody else to feel like they have to do anything. Like I don't, I want everyone to just come and have fun and then be able to go and leave and I'll just sort the rest of the rubbish out. Do you right. know what I mean? But actually like that time I did go, oh, I could do with some help for this, even though we were all doing it for like free and having fun. Do you know what I mean? Reason. And everyone that I have, everyone that's done anything with me creatively, I feel so grateful for all of them because they are all such a huge part of my journey and actually I have this really exciting idea that by the end of like by the like you know in the next kind of five years I will hopefully have been then creating for like 10 years of like videos and and projects and stuff like that and that for me I'd love to do like a a little anniversary video and like little anniversary film of like getting back the people that I've worked with and who are like some of my friends, some people that I've just seen online and like talking with them about them doing something like this. Like, because it's not even just to say anything of me, like being like, God, look how far I've come. It's actually just to be like, we made some really cool stuff and we did it because we loved it. And now we're all like doing different things and having different parts of our lives. And yeah, I think reflection is really important and, and gratitude is really important. And if you've done a video for me, I love you eternally and I'm very, very grateful for you. Or anything for me, any show, anything. I'm yeah. very, very grateful. Oh, well, that really rounds it up. And like, I just wanted to to express what Maraki, Maraki or Maraki? Maraki, yeah. Maraki. So Maraki. it was a word, yeah. What it means. Yeah, go on. Yeah, so I, it's, um, I love, basically the, the choice of it was, it was a Greek word. I... I used to go on holiday a lot there as a kid mm-hmm. and it's the space now where I feel the most like creatively free. Like yeah. I go and I know that I'm not like in you know the busyness of London, London yeah. and I go, okay, I can think. And then my mind just like has all these ideas. I've got notebooks from when I'm on holiday. They've got like sand, sea all over Aww. them because they're like when I've written down all the ideas. So yeah. Yeah. yeah so Meraki is doing something with creativity, soul, love, to put something of yourself into what you're doing, whatever it may be, which is a lovely phrase. Yeah, that's I think such so. a gorgeous phrase for a company. Like, I think so. Yeah, and, it, and I it's think truthful it's truthful to you. Totally, and I think it's something that I know is a part of me, like the Meraki kind of mm-hmm. time in my life. But I think as a creative, I I kind of got to twenty one of it all, and I just went, okay, actually, I think I need to leave Meraki behind and and still carry the same energy with me of Meraki, but that. I need to put my name on it and be proud of the work that I've made. And it was a very, very difficult decision for me because I was like, I love having Meraki because then no one knows it's about me and it's not about me and everyone like to put it away. Um, But actually, if I want to continue doing these things and having these opportunities, I know that people have to be able to recognize my name to be able to call me in for other exciting opportunities to create. And that meant putting me first. And that was the scariest thing I've ever done. But Mm. I wouldn't turn back now. So but now when it says a gone. film by Reese Wilkinson, I get the ick and then <laughs> I go, it's fine. <laughs> Finally come to the end of the pod. Oh, I'm oh. sad. I've had a really lovely time. I'm, oh, I'm glad. Like, I, yeah, I've done a few podcasts and I've had, this is one of my favourites. Oh, so I've had a really lovely Hi. time. Final section, which is basically the red carpet. Okay. Where we just ask the guest to ask a question forward to the next guest. Okay. Hey, so I have to ask a question and then it will be asked. don't know who the guest's going to be. Fierce. So. Okay. Right. What would you like to know? They're going to be a creative of some sort. Okay. Um, I want to know. Oh, well, hold on. Let me have a think because I'm going to ask a good one. So I want to know, is there part of their inner child in any of the work they've created? Wow. 
yeah. So, you know, like we talk about like our inner child being like the things we found cool and exciting yeah. when we were younger and that there's a lot of my inner child in the work that I create. Yeah. And I would love to know in what part of their work that has been like that has been influenced by it. Cool. Our inner child. So grateful for your time your energy like I'm, you're just a light in the industry thank you That's and i love connecting with people that are just like passionate like yeah it's and so i refreshing. i i think that you are fantastic and i think that you should keep doing what you're doing because oh. it's so inspiring for other people to just oh, be like thanks. i've got an idea and i'm gonna do it and yeah. that is what we need more of yes guys <laughs> bye have a wonderful whatever day this goes out on bye. love ya <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. If you did enjoy that, please give it a five star review on Spotify. Like, comment and subscribe on YouTube and tune in for the next episode. And don't forget, be creative.